guys, welcome, 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 gang, gang. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. And if you're not, well, I hope that this show makes you feel a little bit better about life. Because today, as usual, if you didn't know, you're about to find out that you're listening to Exactly Amara with Amara La Negra, a production of iHeart. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much. As usual, tú sabes que yo siempre doy las gracias because I'm very grateful, always humble. Oh, the fact that you guys are always there to show me love, support, and you're always willing to hear my shit. So, with that being said, don't forget to subscribe, rate us, and share this podcast with your friends, with your family, con quien sea. Y mira, dame cinco estrellas, mi amor. Don't be stingy with the stars. Give us five stars, tú me entiendes, because you know that the show's getting better every time. Anyways, today... We're talking about one of my favorite topics because um, I'm always trying to figure out ways to grow, to learn, to evolve, to become a better me. And when I say a better me, I also mean a better me financially. Let's figure out how can we invest our money? How do we create generational wealth? Um, and I'm going to have a friend to break it down for me. For those that still don't get it, for those that don't understand, for those that are still confused, for those that don't feel that... Ah, eso no es importante para mí because I'm still young. I still got time. Not necessarily. Actually, while you're young is the time to do it. Y con eso dicho, my guest today is the founder of First Gen Living, Maria Melchor. Um, mi, mi reina divina fabulosa, tan inteligente como tú no hay otra. Maria, thank you so much for coming in today. Hola, Mara. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here and be talking with you about my favorite topic, which is money and generational wealth building. Uh, I love that we are both, you know, we talk about growing up in immigrant families and growing up with that kind of mentality uh, and trying to, you know, break away from some of that to start, you know, building our own, uh, our, our own wealth. So Uh, I really appreciate you having me here Of course. Today. We're the ones. I really feel like for those that come from immigrant parents, and I always talk about that because a lot of people I feel that don't um, understand it or don't um, get where we're coming from when we say that, our parents fought really hard for us to have a better future, and we're so grateful for that. But we also, I also feel that we need to break certain generational curses. And when I mean certain generational curses, I mean the fact that they have a different mentality of what money means to them and how money should be invested to them. So before we get into it, can you please explain and break down what exactly is generational wealth to you? Yeah. Uh, so I see generational wealth as you know, this opportunity for us, for us individuals to share our money, not only with like our parents, but our future generations. So it's not just about, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. Money's not just about living paycheck to paycheck, but it's about thinking about how can I share it with my family, be it my parents, my grandparents, or also my kids, their kids. Uh, I think about it as like stability, and as flexibility for me and my loved ones. That's how I see generational wealth. Most definitely. And I know that first gen living was something that you created, obviously. Um, it, it educates people, especially first generation immigrants, students and professionals and all that stuff on finance. What motivated you? What inspired you to want to be the one to actually give that helping hand? Yeah, I... You know, I grew up in a very hardworking family, very hardworking, but still low income. You know, we still were living at the federal poverty line. We still, you know, were struggling. Uh, and that always made me have money on my mind. So as soon as I graduated college, I wanted to learn more about how to maximize my money, how to start building some of this generational wealth. What did it, this even look like? What did this even mean? Uh, and I had to do all of that on my own. Like you said, like I didn't have anybody to turn to for guidance. Uh, so I, you know, I started reading books. I started listening to podcasts. I started taking courses. And over time, I felt really confident. I felt like I knew what I was doing. And I wanted to be that mentor, that money mentor for other people that also wanted to break these curses and start building their wealth, but maybe didn't have the interest or the time or just didn't want to have to go through this process alone. 
uh, that's where first gen living came in. I said, I, you know, I want to build my own financial education consulting business where I can just help people one-on-one, uh, help them reach, reach their financial goals. I love that. I love the fact that you're willing to somewhat to a certain extent, um, sacrifice, right? Your own time so that you can be able to provide this information for those that may not have the time, that may be afraid, that may not understand, they might feel that it's too difficult. Um, so definitely super grateful for that. And we're definitely going to be chatting after this is all done to see how you can help me and you can boost up my finances. Cause I'm always, I'm always looking for ways to invest and not only to invest, but to better what I already have. Sometimes I really feel that here in the United States, one thing that we don't take advantage of the fact is that there's a lot of programs that a lot of us don't even know about, right? There's a lot of programs that can help us financially, um, and things might not be as difficult as we think sometimes. Um, we make it seem como que eso es imposible. O sea, even to buy a house, it's like, yo no tengo ese tipo de dinero. And it's like, mommy, there's so many plans que tal vez you may not buy that one, but you could buy another one, right? Que si pones un 10% or this and that. There's a lot of other things you can do. What is your favorite way of investing money? When I think about investing, I think about what's possible for me right now. I've thought about investing in the stock market, investing in real estate. Now there's crypto, investing in crypto. There are many different avenues. And I've thought, well, what can I start off with if I don't have that much cash, if I don't have that much income or cash to get started with with a house or get started with real estate property? Uh, I've also thought I'm somebody who, you know, I'm moving around a lot. I'm young. I don't really know where I want to stay. Uh, I don't really know if real estate is the thing for me right now. So I started with investing in the stock market. That's been my approach. Uh, that's what I've prioritized. But I see real estate as something that may come for me down the line. You were, uh, you were never, and- you were never afraid of the stock market because, for example, I've heard great things about mm-hmm. it. You know, the way I'm in theater, I've seen it in the movies. You know, like, you know, mm-hmm. people are running around. They're little, but I really still don't get it. I know how you can. I've heard of people that make a lot of money. Is it a little bit scary? Yes, because there's a part of me that feels that uh, it's almost like gambling. It's like you put and you, if you really don't understand it, you could lose everything that you had in there. So, um, you were never afraid of taking that first step. I was afraid at first, but right, I put in all of this time and effort in learning about finances. And the more I learn, the more I realize, okay, actually, this is okay. And I like what you said earlier about leaving your money in cash, because uh, leaving your money in cash, something people don't think about is that there is risk in leaving your money in cash. There's not just risk in investing in the stock market or real estate, there's also risk of inflation if you just leave your your cash in your bank account, right? Like, yeah, if you leave it under your bed, right, there's that risk of what if, you know, somebody takes it or your house catches on fire. But even if you leave it in a bank that you trust, your money is losing value uh, if the, you know, if the value of the US dollar is going down over time. Um, so with investing in the stock market, as, as long as you understand that, that there is some risk, but that you can manage that risk, it, it's safe. It's a safe way to build wealth. It's a way that a lot of people, a lot of people who have a lot of money now have been able to build their wealth is by investing in the stock market. Do you have a team that helps you with this or do you do everything yourself? Yeah, I've been doing everything myself. I've been thinking about uh, growing. I I get the fear about investing in the stock market. I think uh, there are many ways to get started. And uh, I think the the first thing to think about is, you know, what it is that your goal is. Um, Something I work with my clients on is just trying to get a vision, to to get their vision and Mm -hmm. turn it into a goal to figure out if investing in the stock market makes sense for them or if something like investing in real estate is what works for them. Do you do you um, feel the same way now about bitcoins and crypto and all these other things NFTs is this something that you're also interested in in uh you know getting yourself involved in that world are you already involved in that world? I'm not already involved in that world. So I 
do see investing in the stock market as way less risky than investing in Bitcoin or crypto mm. because the stock market has actually been around for decades. It's yeah. heavily regulated by the U.S. government. And there's a lot of data that <laughs> helps us understand what we can expect for the future and a lot of laws that help us yeah, keep our money safe. This is uh, something that, is, this, and when it comes to stock market, right? Is this something like, because uh, mm -hmm. I've seen it, people that wake up early in the morning and they go, de una vez to bel noticiero, to watch the news and see where the stock is mm -hmm. up and down and this and that. Do you spend like all day in apps and like, is this like a, a whole side mm -hmm. gig or is this something, you know, once in a while I just look and I just invest a little bit of money there and then como, how do you do it? Yeah, definitely more. Every now and then I look at my investments. I'm not monitoring them day and night, morning and night. I am what I, I call myself a passive long-term investor. So like you're saying, right, life gets busy. I do not want to spend all of my time just like looking at these numbers. Uh, I believe in buying into groups of investments. So instead of buying into one investment at a time, getting exposure to large parts of the economy through these groupings of investments called mutual funds. I buy into mutual funds. I let those investments sit there. I put my cash in, let those investments sit there and have those investments grow as the economy expands, as these companies grow in value over time. Um, there's still risk involved with that, right. but it's so low maintenance, so low maintenance. Okay, so for those that still want to continue, obviously, understanding more besides stock, right? Besides the stock market, um, what are other ways that you advise people to invest their money? Like, let's say a lot of people during the pandemic, they got the little, um, the little stimulus check and didn't know what to do with the money. Mm -hmm. Um, parece mucho poco, right? Because what I've known a lot of people that have started a company, they started off with a thousand dollars, and next thing you know, they flip that money, that money flipped into something else, and next thing you know, yeah, they're multimillionaires. But whether it is you have a thousand dollars or you have ten thousand dollars or maybe twenty thousand dollars saved in the bank, um, and you want to invest it, what are several different ways that you can advise people to invest their money? Yeah, I you know can't tell people what to invest in that only in the US only certified financial advisors can okay. do that. Mm -hmm. What I do with my clients is I teach them how to go out and educate themselves on making these choices for themselves. So uh, I teach more of like the process, I don't tell people exactly what to invest in. So a process I advise people on is Yeah, get started with a goal. So like, what are these 10K? What is this $10,000, $20,000? What do they represent for you? Like, is this something where you want to leave money for your kids? Is this something where, you know, you want to be able to save for a big down payment for five, 10 years from now? Like, what is your goal? Once you have that, if you don't want to invest any more time, like you don't want to work with me, you don't want to work with anybody, you just want to put that money in an investment, Uh, in the stock market, I recommend going to a robo-advisor. So you know how with social media, there's like these algorithms that figure out what you want to see. And well, there's also algorithms for banks that help you, you know, once you give them a goal, they help you actually build your investment portfolio for you and do the rest of the work for you. So you just give them the cash, give them the goal, and this robo-advisor, this algorithm will create the portfolio for you, uh, do kind of all of the technical, scary stuff for you. So that would be my advice for next steps for people who feel a little overwhelmed or a little, a little afraid um, to get started. Okay, so I'll ask you this too. As a, as a Latina, right, where, are you, where is your family from? Mm -hmm. I, I grew up in Mexico, actually. My family is from Mexico. Um, we moved here when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, Mexicana. Bueno, es Mexicana. Okay, chévere. Como Latinas, ¿verdad? Eh, I was explaining earlier how my mom doesn't really understand how finance works these days. Like, she'll still tell me about like 30 years ago, las casas estaban baratas, things were so much cheaper, the food is expensive, this and that, like, you know, there's a part of me that I feel like they're still stuck on how it used to be. And it's like the world is changing, everything has changed, everything's online, esto lo otro, it's, the world is changing, right, overall. So, 
Um, when you talk to your parents or when, when you told them what you were doing, how have you been able to help them grow mentally when it comes to money? Have, how have you been able to teach them? Um, this is how you should use your money. This is the proper way of doing things. When it comes to talking to my parents, I always like to start by telling them about what I'm doing and how it's been working for me. Uh, so I don't like to just tell them, you know, you're wrong. I'm right. Because I always, you know, our parents have some wisdom, right? Like they do have wisdom. And I think it's just about, you know, well, yeah, that is the way it was then. And I want to listen to you and hear about it. And then I want to tell you about what I've been doing. You know, I listen, like I just opened this investment account with this bank and here's how much my money's grown. And no, here are the like very few fees I had to pay. And I want this for you too. Are you interested? Uh, and really like step, you know, ha having many conversations where we just listen to each other and build that trust with them and show them my numbers first. Um, Cause I, I know that a lot of the distrust around, for example, like the stock market and banks in the U S like that is not unfounded. You know, I know that it comes from somewhere. So it's about, you know, like things have changed and look, I'm an example. Like I can show you that this, this is working out for me. It's working out for my clients. So, um, yeah, I mean, they have valid, they have valid stories. I think my parents have always believed in real estate, like a hundred percent, you know, way to build wealth is real estate. Uh, so that's something that I'm, I'm also trying to be open to like, okay, you really believe that. Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of real estate. You already know yeah. anybody that's heard exactly. I'm knows that I always talk about real estate. Cause I'm like, you may not need money for this to buy clothes for your nails, for your hair, but everybody needs a place to live. So you can't go wrong with cement and bricks. Um, and you know, I've been a fan of it. I, but at the same time, I'm always still looking for other ways to grow and uh, learn. I don't think that you should be closed minded. You know, the stock market is not something that I've necessarily been a fan of because I don't understand it, but I'm always willing to learn and understand. So I think that's the most important part is to be open minded. Maria, but I also want to ask you this because I know that you've talked about how some first generation Latinos can feel guilty when they start making money because they compare, you know, um, they compare it to what their parents basically, you know, used to make or what they make with the work. So can you explain that a little bit? Why do you feel that they feel guilty or we feel guilty? Yeah, I mean, I can talk more about, right, like growing up in a family where my dad was working all day, my mom was working all day, but they still were getting underpaid and were not making enough to be able to be where I'm at now, right? Um, seeing that, right, it makes me think, well, I have to work hard all the time every day in order to make like the bare minimum. And now when I, you know, graduated college, now that I have my own business and I'm seeing money kind of come a little more easily than how I came from my parents and, you know, get paid more than what they were probably getting paid at my age. Uh, you know, that, that kind of, I, I just have to acknowledge that, right. That like, they were in a different circumstance. They were probably getting paid less than what their labor was worth. And now I, you know, am in a different position. I'm in a different position where I'm asking for more money. I have the privilege to ask for more money. And I, you know, it's not really about um, good or bad, right? Like I can't feel guilty about that. I can just feel grateful that things have changed and I'm in this new position. Um, so yeah, when clients come to me feeling guilty about earning more than their parents, you know, all I can say is, listen, it's not about, you know, that you don't deserve this. It's that your parents deserve just as much, but they didn't get it. And, you know, that sucks. But now, you know, you, you, you do deserve this. You know, as much as we want things to still remain the same, things have changed. And um, unfortunately, to a certain extent, it is true. Our parents had to work, you know, so much more harder to gain the same amount of money that a lot of us are able to get in like 
a day or two or a week. But I also think that there's access to, to so much more in comparison to back then. But talking about access, something que también I've thought about, pero I haven't officially started moving on it. Lo he pensado, pero eh, retirement. Retirement is something that you hear and I feel like, bueno, if I have money now and I invest it properly, I don't really have to be worried about like the retirement that the government's going to give me based off my taxes and based off this and da da da, da. Like, eh, I guess if I make money now and I invest it properly, I don't have to worry about it. But a la misma vez, that's not the reality for all of us, right? All of us are not in the same situation. So do you think that this generation, especially the minorities and obviously Latinx, and do you think that this generation thinks as much or worries as much about retirement? Are they really thinking and looking ahead into the future? I think my generation, millennials, are definitely thinking about retirement. One, for you know our own retirement, because we hear in the news, right, that Social Security uh, may not be there down the line. That's not true. But, you know, we hear these Nina, these You never headlines, know. You right? never know. <laughs> we hear these headlines and we're also thinking about our parents, right? As we're aging, as our parents age, we're thinking about, you know, oh my God, I have to figure out my retirement, but here's my parents and I want to help them retire. You know, they worked so hard. So I, I, in my experience, it's, it's a huge uh, concern for, for us. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there, there will be social security, maybe, you know, Maybe it won't be as much as we thought it would because I, I don't know what people think, re, you know, Social Security will be like, but it is not a lot of money. It's, you it's know, really federal not. poverty standard, not a lot of money. So even if you get that right, do you want to retire comfortably um, and not necessarily be struggling, you know, as as you as you uh, as you age? So it's definitely top of mind for for my generation. Now, um, to say, my I have to take advantage of you and ask you all the questions I can think of and other things that I know that the exact amount of listeners want to know. Um, so for those that don't know, okay, homegirl over here, she's pretty and brains. I did go to college. However, I didn't finish. Eventually, I would love to go back into school. I've always said that there's a part of me como que still it has that anxiety of like, I need to accomplish what I started whether it's finishing that same career or finding something else, but I want to do it. And also my mom wanted, my mom wanted that damn diploma so bad. Like, yo me sacrifiqué tanto por ti, and blah, blah, blah. And yo lo único que quería es que tú estudiaras, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, I know mom, which today, I, we've spoken about it. I'm like, mira, if I would have stayed in school doing what you wanted me to do for my future, we probably wouldn't live the way that we live now. You know, I was able to follow my passion and what I really loved and what I really cared about. And that's why today we have a different lifestyle. I know a lot of people that go to college, they're stuck there trying to please their parents or just trying to do what they consider. Well, if I study and I do this, I'm going to get this job and this job is going to automatically give me this. And it doesn't necessarily happen the same way for everyone. I know a lot of college educated people who are working in, you know, department stores and that wasn't the vision for the future. So going to college doesn't always guarantee the future that you visualize. But what I do know is that I was stuck with student loans for a really long time. And I had to pay them student loans. Oh my God. You know, it was messing up my credit. Um, it was just a hot mess. Ugh. But anyways, I got it paid off. Gloria a Dios. I was able to do it. Pero I know that there's a lot of people that don't have the same possibilities of paying off their student loans. And at the same time, they have the bills of the student loans and messes up their credit. They're trying to save money to invest, whether it is to buy their home or to buy something or to invest in something else. But in the back of their mind, they're like, I have to get rid of this student loan. So what advice do you suggest for students or just not even students, just for people overall that still have those student loans, you know, waiting on their shoulders? Yeah, there is a way to manage your student loans so that you don't have to be so worried about it messing with your credit. And so you can start thinking about investing and about these other things we've been talking about. So with student loans, if you believe it or not, if you actually like talk to your lender, so if you talk to the federal government, if that's your lender, if you talk to your private lender, if that's your lender, 
and you tell them what your goal is with these loans, you think about your goal and what the goal is for these loans. Like, do you want to pay them off as soon as possible? I know that's not everybody's goal. If you want to make the minimum pay- payment for however long it takes, that's your goal. Okay. Or if you want to have a more balanced approach where you want to make this amount of in payment for this amount of time, whatever your goal is, there's a whole, any goal is valid. And once you go to your lender and you communicate that you can get, you know, the smallest payment you can get a medium payment or a huge payment. You have that taken care of. You've talked to your lender. I think a lot of people get really afraid to even talk to their lender and contact the agency because they're afraid of like the balance or what's going to be going on in there. But you really want to find out so that it doesn't mess with your credit and it doesn't make it impossible for you to go and pursue these other things like real estate down the line. So so confront um, the issue. Confront the issue. Don't ignore it. Yeah, like if you have bills, Mm -hmm. if you have bills, whatever it is, if you have things in collection, whatever it may be, don't ignore it. Como que the longer I ignore it, como que it's going to go away. It's not going to go away. It's going to yes, stay there. Exactly. It's going to build up. It's going to get worse. So um, confront it. Do do let uh, whoever it is know this is my goal. Like you just said, this is how much I want to pay. Or my goal is within the next three years, pay it off. How much should I be paying? And then if that means having to get a side gig, bueno, my amor. You, you know what I'm saying? You got to figure it out. Look, these days, don't do what I say. Don't listen to me, but I'm just saying, I've heard of some people that pay some student loans doing the OnlyFans. I don't know. You do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Pero um, definitely don't just ignore your problems. Don't ignore, you know, the fact that you have bills, uh, you know, accumulated ice and tal. Maria, my love, I want to thank you so much for all the great advice that you've given us today. Where can the people follow you? Where can they find um, you know, your organization, everything that you have going on. I don't know un poquito de eso. Yeah, uh, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to connect with some of you. I'm over at Instagram, First Gen Living. You can also look up my name, Maria Melchor, on Instagram. Uh, or you can go to my website, which is www.firstgenliving.com. Uh, but I'm on Instagram most of the time. So yeah, I'd love to hear your story what you're struggling with, uh, and yeah, what some of your goals are. Bueno, guys, you already know this was the first part of many of many, because you already know I'm not done talking about investments and generational wealth. This is just como que the beginning of many more conversations to come. I feel that a lot of people, especially the young generation, needs to continue to listen about this, needs to continue to learn about it. I, too, am always willing to learn. And now with Maria, when this is over, Maria, mija, you can't leave me here hanging. I want to know about the stock market. How much do I have to invest? How do I do this? So I'm definitely going to be talking to you. Um, and maybe, you know, next time I'm on my podcast, I can let you guys know when I finally started because the thing, the hardest thing is always to start. We're always scared to start. Just to get your feet wet is the scariest thing. Pero como dice mi mamá, nobody's born knowing. You have to learn during the process of life. So Uh, With that being said, guys, thank you so much as usual for joining and listening to Exactly Amada. Remember to follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at Exactly Amada, also My Cultura Podcast on Instagram para que se enteren de todos los chismes y de todos los podcasts que tiene My Cultura que están buenísimos. You can also watch the podcast on the YouTube channel. Go on the search bar and write Exactly Amada or Amara La Negra, and you will find all the podcasts, the behind the scenes, and all that good stuff. This has been a production of iHeart to My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite show, like Exactly Amara. With that being said, I love you guys so much. I shall see you guys next Thursday. Mwah. Ciao.